living just enough I'm living just for the city Living, living, living just enough Living Hi guys, it's me and welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about working as a rental agent. Um, as you guys know who have been watching my previous videos, I have been working as a real estate agent for a little over six months and mostly I have been doing rentals. So let me just give you the rundown, the tea, the honest truth about being a rental agent. Now being a rental agent is very tricky, it's very competitive. Now I filmed a video about a week ago about um, my interactions with a competitive real estate agent. I'm going to leave the link to that video in the description box for you guys to see so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now being a rental agent isn't a job that I feel like that you can work full time and be able to support yourself or a family or children because the money is just not guaranteed um, if that's the right way to put it. So our, our broker, my broker who I work under, she gets a list of apartments and we have to try to rent those apartments out and from those apartments that I rent out, that's what I get paid from. Think about all the factors you put into being a realtor, your phone bill. You talk to people all day constantly. Um, I must get about 100 phone calls a day, about 50 text messages. It's a lot of talking on the phone to people, only to meet up with them, to submit their applications, to just have them denied. It's really freaking annoying, like on so many levels. You gotta spend gas money. You know, you gotta put gas in your car to travel to all these apartments and to your clients so you can show them all of these places. So you're wasting gas. Not only am I wasting gas and money on gas, I have not reaped any of the benefits from this, um, you know, spending gas money. Um, another thing is I've put over 10,000 miles in my car with all this driving over the past six months. So if you have a leased car or a brand new, if you got a luxury car, a Lexus, a Mercedes, any high-end car, it's not worth it. Putting all these miles in your car, no, 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 ma'am. The only thing about being a rental agent is that once you rent the apartment, you do get paid quicker. Um, it's like faster money. So that could be a good thing if that's what you're looking for versus waiting to close a deal on a house which could wait, you know, could which could take months and months but you get a larger amount of money. Also, I definitely need new tires, all this driving, my true front tires are bald. Um, just dealing with people on a daily basis, customers, people that are rude, people that are nasty, people that get denied that will keep calling you and harassing you, they will curse you out, they would claim that you tried that you stole their application fee money and that you're not really a realtor and they're all like the list goes on and on again. On and on and on. Um, and then you will have clients where they will, you will set an appointment with them like, okay, we're going to meet on Johnson Avenue at 5 p.m. You will text this client at 4 p.m. and say, are we still meeting? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be there. You get there at 4 and then you're looking like, okay, where are they? You go to text them, oh, I'm going to have to cancel. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you just waste my time and my gas? But there's really nothing you could do about it. And I swear, as far as realtors, what they should start doing is, when clients set appointments, they should have them transfer $5 into a PayPal account, right? This is what they should really do. You set an appointment, okay. You send them an email address, they pay PayPal $5. If they do a no-show, guess what? You keep their $5. That's for your time and your gas. And then, <laughs> if they do show up, you can refund them you know transfer it back to their account like cause it's so crazy how much people will stand you up this is why I always try to book like my broker says this is wrong but book like two three four clients for that same location at a time this way if three don't show up at least you was there you know you didn't waste your time or anything so that's what I've been doing lately I just been booking a whole bunch of people for one um you know place in this way if you don't show up okay two people showed up i don't feel like my time is wasted i'm happy i can go on about my day and i also um as far as being a rental agent okay so we get a list of apartments some of them are really high end like luxury apartments i do a lot of my rentals in northern new jersey on the waterfront 
Um, it's really close to New York City, probably about 15 to 20 minute bus ride or you could take the ferry. It's a really popular place to live. It's pretty expensive, but it's cheaper to live on the Jersey side than in Manhattan. And I'm going to try to insert a clip of um, like exactly like, you know, how you can see across the water into Manhattan because I just think it's cool. And every time I go to work and I'm standing, you know, where I can see across the water, I always have to do like a Snapchat or something like that or take a photo because it's just so pretty. As, as a matter of fact, follow me on Snapchat because that's where you can see me, you know, be silly and, you know, go about my day or whatever. So, back to the apartments. You get a list of apartment rentals and some of them are really beautiful. And let me get some in the middle. And let me get some that are just straight up trifling. That's how some places are. And I'm just like, some real to some realtors, the bottom line is the dollar. They don't care what the place looks like. If you need an apartment... They gonna show it to you. It, they even rent them. And sometimes my broker sends me um, emails, and she's like, "Oh, and the deposit was taken on X, Y, and Z apartment." I look at the address, like that busted apartment. Oh my gosh! Like who paid to live there? So, and it's so funny when clients, people usually look, you know, they go to different rooms, tours, or they look for multiple apartments. And when they get to me, they're like, "Oh my gosh, she showed us such nice places. Thank you. This is like the nicest." Uh, a lot of these places, I, I don't even want to step foot into them. I might open a door to the apartment, and if I see that it looks crazy, I just close it and go on about my way. Another thing is you got to constantly post on um, Trulia, Hotpad, Zillow, Craigslist, and that's a lot of work. It's like a lot of work that you put into being a rental agent that you don't technically get paid for until you rent out the apartment. So I spend so much time replying to emails from people, um posting ads, refreshing my ads, just trying to get and generate clientele and leads and all that stuff. And of course I have my business cards that I hand out to people. And we also, I also deal with Section 8 clients, which is a whole, I mean, you can, you can get paid dealing with Section 8 clients, but yeah. So as far as rental, being a rental agent, there's a lot of cons. I would say that you should consider before embarking on the journey of a rental agent. This is why now I'm trying to secure listings um, and I'll tell you about that journey um, another time. But before I start, you know, rambling on, um, I just want to say thank you for watching this video and I hope that it was helpful and share it on your social networks. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Have a blessed day. Keep doing what you do. Keep hustling. And I'm on my way to church. And that's it. So, bye.